Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and in this video, we're going to conduct a sea trial and performance evaluation on the newest launch from CL Yachts, the CLB-88. CL Yachts is a division of Choi Lee and focuses on yachts under 100 feet. She's built to Rena standards and the hull is entirely resin infused, meaning it's stronger while at the same time being lighter. Fully loaded, she weighs in at 175,000 pounds, which puts her lighter than the empty weight of others in her class. Let's start by looking at her operational features. The main deck helm is starboard mounted. It starts with the compass in line with the helm. There's an upper panel that's 23 inches high. It holds the twin 21 inch displays. Below are an array of displays starting with the C-Zone control panel, the gyro stabilizer control, an Optimus steering system display with rudder indicator, the CAT engine displays, the Garmin autopilot, a multi-data display, and the control for the stabilizer fins. Below are the VHF, ignitions, wiper controls, the engine controls, the windlass, thrusters, and spotlight controls. With our tight confines, I chose to depart from the marina at the lower helm for better visibility to the stern. Of course, the camera system also provides the needed visibility as well. The side power bow and stern thrusters were more than powerful enough to move us against a stiff breeze trying to hold us against the dock. We had to back out of the fairway, and that showed how responsive the 88 is to steering using differential thrust. It was effortless. Once clear of the marina, we entered Fort Lauderdale's new river, and this narrow winding river always provides a good example of bringing out the worst of a boat very quickly. Only in this case, there was none. She handles remarkably easily at minimum speed. The wheel is vertically mounted to a fixed base, and I can't help but notice the carbon fiber base of the panel continues up the sides where it morphs into grab rails, and then behind the panel is a beautiful carbon fiber binnacle mount for the compass. The 47-inch wide helm seat is fitted with a remote control for the forward displays, but I'd like to see it move to the center armrest. Then two could use it, and it just seemed to be in the way more often than not on this one. Visibility from the center-mounted upper helm is excellent, except to the stern since it's mounted so far forward. This one includes the same carbon fiber rails, but here they take on a new comfort level. As with the lower helm, this one also accommodates dual 21-inch displays. Beneath are displays and controls in the same order as with the lower helm. There's a double-wide 47-inch observer seat to starboard and a single seat behind the helm, this time with the remote control for the displays on the right side armrest. We make our way to the bow by way of the 22-inch wide symmetrical side decks, and they're protected by a 26-inch wide extended overhead 6 feet 8 inches off the deck. Bulwarks come up 22 inches, and the inch and a quarter rails top out at 28 inches. Just ahead of midships there are two steps, a 7-inch and an 8-inch, up to the foredeck. At the bow, two hawse holes lead to heavy-duty cleats, a Maxwell VWC 4000 hydraulic windlass with an inch and a half gypsy, road capstan and chain stopper is in a deck recess. This handles the 200 feet of half inch galvanized chain that leads to the 63 kilogram Lumar Delta anchor. To the sides are large index storage compartments with molded steps leading to the bottom. Ahead are a road locker and another smaller storage compartment with the wired windlass remote mounted to the hatch underside. Foot controls are fully forward, providing a clear sight line to the ground tackle in the water. Now, a boat this size will almost always be crewed, so we have accommodations for a crew of four access through the watertight door at the swim platform. I'd like to see some rails at the entrance. To port, there's a dinette with an expandable table on a fixed pedestal. To starboard is a storage locker and a stacked washer dryer. A pantry is just forward with the head next to that and to starboard is the captain's cabin with a queen berth, storage, and a TV. To port is the crew cabin with an over-under layout. Straight ahead from the entrance is a modest galley with a sink and storage to one side, and the microwave and refrigerator to the other. Then we have the watertight door to the engine room. Inside, there's a whopping 6 feet 5 inches of overhead clearance, among the most we've seen in any engine room. And talk about spacious. This engine room is wonderfully open and easy to conduct maintenance in. Of course, the main attraction are the twin cat C32 Acer engines at 1600 horsepower each. At the narrowest, there's 20 inches between the rails surrounding the engines. They're freshwater cooled, have electronic injection, and start with a 24 volt system. 
To port is the hydraulic system. Above is a Delta T filtration and ventilation system. The exhaust system is well supported and includes an air water separator. Here is the first of two 53kW generators with a paralleling controller for automatic start stops and load sharing as demand increases. It also favors the generator with the lowest hours first. There's a fixed firefighting system, and upon activation, the engines, generators, fuel lift pumps, fuel transfer pumps, and blowers are shut down, and hull side ventilation dampers are closed. To starboard, there's the second 53 kW generator. Aft and to starboard is the Dometic air conditioning system. The boat is also pre wired and plumbed for a customer's choice of a water maker. At the aft center section, there's a gyro stabilizer, and there's also a set of stabilizing fins, so yes, we have underway and at rest stabilization. The CO Yacht COB88 has a length overall of 88 feet 11 inches, a beam of 22 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 5 feet 5 inches. With an empty weight of 152,732 pounds, 70% fuel, 32% water, and five people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 167,483 pounds. With a pair of 1600 horsepower CAT C32 Acerts turning 102 centimeter five bladed props and run up to 2350 RPM, our speed topped out at 24.4 knots. There really is no best cruise setting as the range increases fairly linearly as the throttle is reduced. That said, the CAT engines are always comfortable pushed to an 80% load and that comes in at about 2200 RPM. That produced 22.3 knots with a 139.5 gallon per hour fuel burn for a range of 431.7 nautical miles. If distance is the goal, drop it down to a trawler speed of 9.8 knots at 1000 RPM and the fuel burn drops to 18.2 gallons per hour and the range opens up to 1,461.7 nautical miles. Upon returning to the marina, it was more of the same with extremely tight confines leaving no room for error and as expected, the COB-88 handled it without any problems whatsoever. The boat that was on our stern was gone, but I still activated the aft camera for a close watch over the transom. Differential thrust kept us easing ahead while the powerful hydraulic bow and stern thrusters easily moved the boat with little more than a momentary push of the control sticks. This is a remarkably comfortable boat to drive. She's at once a family boat and a charter candidate. With a resin infused cord hull, she brings strength along with reduced weight. And she's also gorgeous inside and out with a wide open layout that's instantly appealing but that's covered in another video, be sure to look for it. Remarkably easy boat to drive. There's no delay whatsoever in the rudder responsiveness to the helm. It's not like we're going into heavy seas, but the seas we are getting, you really don't feel them at all. It just has a, str a strength to her, and you can feel it when you're driving it. Probably the biggest takeaway is that if this is gonna be an owner-operated boat, it's not gonna be a problem. She's a very easy boat to handle and responsive to every touch. This is my full sea trial and performance evaluation of the all new CLB 88 from CL Yachts. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.